Hello everyone, I'm Al Rochelle, and thank you for joining us. We continue to have discussions about POTS and dysautonomia and other ANS systems. And joining me right now is Dr. Juan Guzman. Dr. Guzman, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me today. Okay, give me a little bit about your background and how you're involved with, with dysautonomias in general. So uh, my training, by, I'm training uh, internal medicine, right? So I did a fellowship in autonomic disorders uh, back in the 2000s in Canada. So I'm originally from Colombia, but I went to Canada when I was in my 20s uh -huh. to pursue my medical education. And, um, and I did my specialty and then decided to settle and start my practice. And I've been in practice for 10 years with a special interest in autonomic disorders. So I see patients with POT, syncope, and orthostatic intolerance syndromes in general. And you've been seeing more and more patients because everybody has been seeing more as more, either more are being diagnosed or more have these conditions. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell which way it goes. Well, in the, in the last few years, I think people is more aware about the conditions and Two, the physicians also are more aware in the community. So they were getting more and more and more referrals um, to our clinics in general, and, uh, and certainly we're able to provide better care to these patients because unfortunately those patients are always lost in the space. Yeah. And, 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 and there's a, a lot of time to the point that they have the diagnosis and especially the treatment that they, they need for rehabilitation because those conditions in general, these autonomias, are uh, quite, uh, impair the quality of life severely. Yeah, so we're going to talk about coexisting conditions, and we've talked about these before. So we're going to talk about EDS, POTS, and MCAST. And let's just so for definition purposes, let's go through each one of those. EDS stands for? EDS stands for Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. So it's a, it's a group of connective tissue disorders. Connective tissues are the connectors between different organs, blood vessels, muscles, and so on. So this is a congenital disorder, right? So that affect those uh, connectors and produces different type of, of conditions like joint hypermobility, right. um, stretchy skin, okay, easy bruising, stretch marks. So all these organs that in intertwined, right, so they are affected by this condition. And there are different types. There are at least 13 types of, of, of connective tissue disorders, okay. or EDS. Yeah. Uh, but the one particular that um, uh, is associated with dysautonomias is called hypermobility type, okay? Mm -hmm. And this uh, condition has some sort of general size hypermobility, so double joints, if you have heard, yeah, if you yeah, have seen yeah. the, in, the, in, in, the, uh, with, uh, in the past. And number two, some general symptoms, systemic symptoms. It could be cardiovascular symptoms, like dysautonomias, like, uh, like POTS, for instance. It could be heart damage, like major valve prolapse and other conditions, um, plus also um, no association with other, other diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have POTS, which we've talked about a lot, and I think po most people quite understand what that is, and then MCAS. So MCAS is another subtype of condition associated with the release of uh, um, histamine mediators. So histamine uh, is an abnormal release of histamine, basically. And histamine is a hormone that helps us to deal with infections, mm -hmm. okay? So basically destroys or uh, uh, bugs and also enhance the potential of the antibodies and helping the, the um, the body to, to, to fight infections in general, plus also if, if it's involving allergies as well, right? So mm -hmm. itchiness is called by histamine, right? Yeah, it's yeah. produced by, 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 by histamine. So, so we have seen this association between POTS and mast cell activation disorders. So, and that's what we're going to talk about now, now that we've kind of defined the three. How do they interact with each other and how does one affect the other? I think the we, we, we need to start from EDS and uh, POTS, right? So patients with EDS, as, as I mentioned before, they're more prone to get orthostatic intolerance. And in these patients, they also, they are more prone to have POTS. From the other side, we saw patients with mast cell activation disorders that they were having symptoms of POTS, they were having the dizziness, lightheadedness, a lot of GI symptoms, which is basically what happened in patients with, uh, uh, with mast cell activation syndromes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and then we made a connection. It came from patients in my clinic. So a patient told me, okay, I have mast cell activation syndrome. I have this itchiness, weird itchiness. So we look in the liter literature and we found some reports making those connections. And we eventually, I, I work with, um, in Toronto with one of the um, uh, aluminologists at San Michael Hospital, Dr. Peter Varas, who I connect with, yeah. network with, and uh, we actually um, uh, look at our series of cases and we found uh, that, that, that connection between these three conditions. Patients with EDS and POTS that they were seen in our EDS clinic in Toronto, uh -huh. in my clinic in, in, in Hamilton, and, um, and in his clinic. So in, in most of these cases, do you see this most often? And then I, I would say, which comes first? 
or do we know? Again, there is no um, cause effect, you know, uh, uh, at the moment because we don't have enough data, right? So there's right. something that has been uh, that come out in the last in the last probably I would say 10 years, right, mm -hmm. in the literature, and there is a small uh, research group that are trying to find out what is the special link. I mean, we suspect that the histamine cause dilation of the blood vessels. Patients with EDS, they are more prone to have dilated vessels, right? So that certainly increases the chances of developing these autonomias or POTS because the heart, the heart what it's gonna do is try to compensate. It's try to fight this venous pulling. So all the blood or your blood volume will be in your lower limbs, so you're not gonna be able to maintain the blood flow in your brain, and that's how you're gonna have the symptoms of dizziness. And your heart, basically what it does, is increase your heartbeat. And that's how uh, we end up having, you know, the symptoms of the tachycardia and the chronic fatigue, you know, the brain fog and all the symptoms that POTS, uh, you know, has. So how do you, how do you come up with a, a regime? And, and I'm thinking, other is there, because if you start using drugs, then don't those have other interactions with each other and that make it even more complicated? Or, because each one of those symptoms must respond differently Absolutely. I mean, there, there, there's one thing in patients with uh, EDS. They use a lot of, they have a lot of chronic pain, okay? Yeah. And, and certain medications for chronic pain, like the opiates, they have also effects on uh, blood pressure, right? So, so you're making things worse because patients with EDS, they're more prone to have uh, POTS or dysautonomias, and you're giving medication that are actually going to increase the chances of having these uh, events. Now, if we add to this the mast cell activation syndrome, then we have more, more, more serious symptoms. However, patients with mast cell activation syndromes, they actually respond pretty well to what we call histamine blockers, right? Okay, so, sure. And those are the common over-the-counter, you know, ranitidine, cetericine, the, the, the medication that used for allergies in sure, the... Right, yeah. in, 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 in the general population used for allergies. So actually the, 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 the treatment for mast cell activation syndrome is cheap and accessible to patients, right? right. So, but it's to make the connection uh, what I think is a challenge and right. what certainly some physicians struggle with. So are these conditions that will last the rest of their lives? I mean, first of all, EDS is a congenital disorder, so it's that one, it, right, it, yeah. it comes in the package that I tell my sure. patients, right? So, <laughs> Gosh. However, uh, certainly POTS and mast cell activation syndromes are diseases or conditions that you actually treat symptomatically. Mm -hmm. We still don't know the cause, we still don't know the connection, and there is a lot of con con controversy around these this, this conditions, but they certainly respond to therapy, uh, to empirical therapy, what we call empirical therapy, very well. Yeah, is there any one demographic group that in particular that, that that is more susceptible to what we call the clus this cluster? I, I think what we're doing is, uh, in the EDS Clinic in Toronto, we're trying to um, develop a uh, register of these patients, right? So you need to know the history of the disease first, mm -hmm. okay? You need the natural history of the disease. So, so the, f the first step in doing research is know what we have or what patients are the ones that are having this condition, what is the natural history, what the journey of the patient has. So that's what we're doing now. The, the chance is that we don't have data, but anecdotally, I can tell you that uh, this happening in young female adults particularly yeah. Caucasian patients, right? So uh, very, very, very rare in males and uh, an elderly population. Gosh. So we're trying to teach doctors. Obviously, we've hinted at it right now. So if you had a message for a doctor that's watching this right now, what would it be in regards to what we're talking about? I, I think that it thinks out of the box, right? I mean, so, so POTS, it could be the different point of entry, right? So a patient can come from ADS clinic. A patient can come from cardiology neurology diagnosing POTS or can come from a allergy immunologist. Mm -hmm. So what we want to make sure is that uh, uh, they are aware this, that this connection exists, right? So, and there are easy ways to diagnose, number one, and number two, uh, that there are treatments that they are available for those patients. Right, and for the patients that are watching this, they're going, who have been, may have been struggling for months, or in some cases years, trying to figure out what's going on in their bodies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I think at the end of the day, for those patients, what we want to make sure is improve their quality of life, right? So, right. and, and if you identify the disease and if you target the therapy, you certainly improve the outcomes and the patient can rehabilitate and can come back to, uh, you know, the, 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 their baselines. Great, doctor. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Keep up the good work, okay? okay. Thank you.